Welcome back to Fishitis, everyone. On today's episode, I'm going to slow it down a little bit and just show you guys some tips, some tactics, some techniques, some presentations for steelhead trout. I just got finished visiting the old man in Pennsylvania, and we had an absolutely fabulous trip fishing for fall steelhead in the Lake Erie tributaries, mainly Elk and Walnut Creek. You can check that episode out. I'll have it up at the end of this clip here or you can check in the description down below. I'll put it down there as well if you want to just see the action. It was amazing. We caught tons of fish. We were there for three days. We had a storm, a snowstorm come through, decreased the number of anglers a little bit, and we just caught fish all day. But I wanted to share with you some techniques. And I'll start just by saying that I fished for steelhead since I was old enough to hold a fishing rod. I fished for when I was five years old. That's when I started. And back then, 40 years ago, it was different. It was different the way we fished. We fished mainly with bait. We fished with egg sacks. We fished with crawlers. We fished with skein, primarily. And we didn't use floats. We didn't use bobbers, strike indicators, as the fly fishermen like to call them. But we drift fished it. We just drift our lines down through the current, and we would use heavier line. We used bass rods usually medium action, six foot, six, six fishing rods with like 10, 12 pound test line. We didn't know any better, but we caught fish. There were a lot of fish in the streams. There were even, there were even salmon back then. And Erie, that's something about Lake Erie is they used to have a salmon program and the steelhead trout took off once they started stocking them. They really weren't getting return rates with the salmon. So they stopped the salmon stocking and really increased it with steelhead. And it's just amazing how it's taken off over the over the decades really so that's how we used to fish for them but what happened was it became really popular and a lot of people caught on to this fishery and it was because it was such a good fishery i mean we can talk about the old days and there's guys who fished back then where literally you can walk the streams and you wouldn't see another angler and you come up to a, a hole and there would be hundreds of steelheads in, in that hole and you would just catch fish all day long it's gotten more difficult lately over the years. We've seen the increase in anglers. And so techniques and presentations have changed drastically. Gone were the days of being able to go down and fish with egg sacks and night crawlers and skein and drift. I mean, you still catch fish like that and you still do that today. Don't get me wrong, especially if the conditions call for it, when the water's up, when it's high and muddy, or if it's you know, even just stained. And even clear, you can still catch them on those things, but not as often. What happened was, guys, you started to have the anglers coming in, more and more people fishing, learning how to catch these steelhead, and those presentations slowed down. So what happened was, guys started to develop some other techniques to catch fish, especially the pressured fish, because steelhead seem to be getting pressure, and they seem to be reacting to that. So a lot of guys started to use lighter lines, especially in the clear water for these spooky fish. And so he started to use, go drop down to eight and then six and even four pound test lines. So it was really hard to catch fish on the same tactics that worked back in the day, as I call it. So guys started to develop some different ways of fishing, different techniques. They went to what's the noodle rod. This, this got invented, and this is one that I've had. This is a Gene Loomis. This is a rod that's I've had for, I don't know, 25 years probably. It's still a really good rod. This is one of the original noodle rods that really has so much bend in it. I mean, I could bend this all the way in half on a fish and I wouldn't break my line at all. And this is what guys started to use. This happens to be 11 and a half foot. And they, they make them anywhere from you know, probably eight feet up to 14 feet I've seen noodle rods. That's a true noodle rod. They make them a little different today not quite as flimsy you have a little more backbone so you can you can bring the fish in a little easier started using that started going really light really small tackle and what a lot of guys would use they use they'd use single eggs and we started to use floats as well to get a good drift down through the current guys started to use strike indicators and you know, today we use the blackbirds. They they work really well. We used to use the thills, the thill bobbers, and there's the drennens work well. Also, we started to use the floats. Started to drift with really small hooks, 
size 18, size 16, size 14 small hooks, and we would put just one single egg on it. And that was dynamite. That caught fish when no other, nothing else would work. You guys would be fishing with the conventional, you know, the egg sacks, even in clear water, and the fish were spooky, and it just wasn't working. So the, so the single eggs really took off, and guys would just come into the spot, and there, even if there were fishermen there, they would just catch fish after fish after fish. So that's, that's one technique that developed. We also started to use better reels. We, you know, back in the day, we would use the kind of reels with the cheap drags. Steelhead can strip a drag in no time at all. I'm still, st I still stick with the old Stratic. In fact, I have a, an ancient one here that I bought years ago. You can tell this has a lot of TI, as we like to call it. And this, this is still going strong today. This is probably, it's got to be a 25 year old reel. And they still, the drag is still good on, on it. They're a little pricey today. I, I've switched over somewhat to the Daiwas. I, I like to use the Daiwa reels. Uh, they have a really good, strong drag system as well. For steelhead so and there i i buy i haven't been spending as much money on reels you know i think you can get this legalis for maybe 70 60 70 bucks which is cheap for a reel these days so those are some of the things i like to some of the some of the reels i'd like to use as far as fishing lines go do yourself a favor if you just fish erie in pennsylvania and you're just fishing mainly alka walnut and those tributaries along steelhead alley spoil your line up or spoil your reel up with XT trilene six pound test get the green that seems to really lend in with the water well and then if it's really clear start using tippet i like to use fluorocarbon tippet especially on alka walnut when because the water's clear there often and the fish are spooky it just seems like you can not only catch more fish because they're not spooked from the line, but it also seems to give your small fly much more action, much better natural presentation for these fish. And that is key with steelhead is having a natural presentation drifting through the current. And so we go with fluorocarbon. You can experiment with different sizes. This just happens to be seven pound, four X. You can go with, you know, you can go even lighter than that. I like the Seaguire and Fluoroflex fluorocarbons use that i you know it's one of those things where some guys are saying ah oh, that doesn't really work does that really work but there's something about that it's probably a combination of the fish not being out because it is invisible underwater fluorocarbon's invisible underwater so that has something to do with it and also i really strongly believe that it presents a much more natural drift to the fish all right let's get into some specifics with as far as techniques that work really well for steelhead and the first one that, that we've talked about, that we've been doing for decades, is just dead drifting. And that's the most effective and most common technique that we use for steelhead. And we could do that without a float or with the float. Like I said, we used to do it without floats exclusively. It just seems like the floats have helped in, in a few different ways. First of all, it keeps you from hanging up on the bottom. Uh, when you use a float, you can you can adjust it like these these uh, blackbirds or the thills you have these rubber sleeves and you can adjust them and to any depth that you want and you can prevent from getting hung up on the bottom that's the first thing and and, and also it's it's easier to mend, i think it's easier to mend your line when you have that on top and you have it attached to that float you can mend your line and, and when you mend your line you're pulling it up the current so that you get a natural drift through it presents to the steelhead and they keep you from really getting caught in those current seams and you can really pull your line up mend it up in in, in fishing certain seams if you've got a back current or an eddy you can lift it up and that's what the noodle rods the long rods help do that as well okay so that's that's just dead drifting is 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 the most common technique and i like to use floats for that you can you can experiment with the size of the floats it depends on the size of the river it depends on how fast the current's flowing and you got to adjust the certain weights as well uh, not that the the dead drifting without a float doesn't work still i still see guys using it effectively it, it's you, you got to feel the bites as well sometimes still ahead strike hard other times they don't so you've got that but with a float you can see the subtle bites as soon as they that kind of that float moves or even just dunks a little bit under the surface 
uh, and sometimes it popped up because if they hit it and it comes to the surface, it, it kind of goes flat and you just set the hook and you've got the fish. So we like to use floats most of the time. As far as fly selection goes, there are so many different flies you can use for steelhead. So many different patterns. Eggs. Steelhead love eggs. There are different theories behind this. Whether it's, you know, they're just hungry. They come into the rivers and the streams and they just want to feed on eggs. And they like the smell of it, of course. It has a lot of scent. And they'll eat the eggs. Another theory is that they're killing the eggs because it's not their offspring. And it's survival to fit is kind of thing. What, whatever it is, regardless, they love eggs. So these eggs have worked since as long as I've been alive, I know that. And people have been cutting out the, the, the row or the skein and cutting it up and using that for bait and tying that into egg sacs, curing the eggs and using go eggs. But you can also use imitations. Sucker spawn is one that it, this was developed many years ago and the suckers spawn in the rivers in the spring and the steelhead eat the spawn of the suckers. And so they started to tie imitation egg patterns out of different kinds of yarns. Micro yarn, you've got just regular yarn, you've got the Angola yarn that we talked about. There's all different kinds of patterns depending on the conditions, different colors that you can use, different sizes. Experiment with it. You've got the crystal meth, which is a really, really good sucker spawn. That, that's something that is typically, it has kind of a crystal appearance to it and it's real bright and it, used, it works more in darker water. And you've got the Angora yarns that guys use, you get the micro yarns. You know, try the natural colors in clear water, try the brighter colors in the darker water, switch it up and you'll find you'll catch a lot more fish that way. They are really effective though, egg patterns. The Angora has a lot of fuzz to it so it kind of looks like a, a little bit of skein where you know with skein it kind of has some stuff hanging off the back of it so that, that works especially in a little bit higher water but there's different kinds of yarn so you can experiment with that egg patterns there's blood dots you can tie you can tie the um the angora sucker spawns you can glow bugs that imitate single eggs you've got beads you've got rubber single eggs there's just so many different things as far as egg patterns go to try try them out have them in your arsenal and switch up. The other thing that we have are nymphs, and that's you know that's something the fly fishermen really have used for years, and, and the bay fishermen really hadn't caught on that why are they hooking fish after fish? Well, nymphs. There's so many different kinds of nymphs in all different sizes. So experiment with those. You got your your regulars like your hares airs and your pheasant tails, those kind of things. Your copper johns, but there are so many different types of of nymphs that you can use and they'll work, they'll work. Just trying to get a, a pattern that it's working that day, you know, and, and learn how to tie them too. And you can really um, increase your chances of catching steelhead. Jigs, jigs have been effective for a really long time. For as long as I can remember, we've used them. Probably one of the best baits for steelhead, one of the best lures, period. And they use these all over the, the country, even out west they use them, they use much bigger and much brighter ones out there because the water stays stained for months at a time and it's a much larger area that they need to attract the steelhead from a distance sometimes but not here in, in Pennsylvania in you know with elk and walnut and his other tributaries they, they're they're clear a lot of the time a lot of time during the season so you don't need to use those big jigs they still work though at times and don't be afraid to use them but there are so many different materials that you can use with jigs as well it, mainly the ones that we use are marabou, deer hair or bucktail we call them, and also the rubber or the plastic type of, of minnows that we've, we've used recently that have worked really well. So there's a different ways of, of, of using these jigs. You can dead drift them, certainly dead drift them down through the current with a float, and you can swing them at the end drift. We call it swinging. You can swing anything really, and it's an effective method. As you drift down, you get to the bottom of your drift, you let it swing out, and it works really well, especially with like woolly buggers and nymphs and stuff like that, and where it comes up off the bottom like an emerging insect, and the steelhead will take it. You can do that with jigs as well. And, and with the woolly buggers, they're kind of, you can use them the same way. Fly fishermen have used these for 
a really long time and and they've caught tons of fish and then the spin fishermen caught on and started using them so you can use them when you're spin fishing with your noodle rods also really effective way of catching fish so jigs and woolly buggers they really work well you can like i said you can use those in, the, in different materials different sizes try different colors you don't just have to dead drift them though you can use these you can drift them down and twitch them i see guys twitching them as well so as they're drifting through the current you're giving them a twitch 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 and the fish will strike it uh, experiment with tight you know how hard you're doing that some days if the water's colder they, they won't strike it as hard so you don't want to twitch it quite as hard as you, as you normally would other ways of using these you can use them in slack water you've seen on some of the shows that i've had you know, and I've used these jigs in, in the marinas and in the lake. And you can toss these out and you can reel them in and let them stop. You can twitch them. You can just let them sit out there and let the waves kind of move the jig up and down and, and the fish will take it. So different presentations on different days. But jigs are effective and you really should have those on you at all times. We talked a little bit about woolly buggers when I was talking about jig fishing. And this is something that... Uh, is really an effective fly for steelhead trout. You can tie these in all different materials and all different sizes just like every other fly. And we talked about Jeter's and Jeter's, you know, he, he's an expert at, at developing new flies. I told you that. And he, he likes to fish the woolly bugs, likes to fish jigs, he likes to fish a lot of different flies. The thing about him is that he keeps evolving and with the more and more anglers coming to the streams and he fishes the high access areas he fishes where everybody else is and he still can figure out a way to catch these fish because he changes he changes his fly he develops new ones every year and they're all basically imitations of woolly buggers and jigs and nymphs and stuff like that it really is but there's just so many different variations you have to switch up you have to try different things if you do that you'll learn how to catch more fish so that's some techniques and tactics that I've used for fishing for steelhead trout, primarily in the Erie Tribs, Elk and Walnut Creek specifically. And it didn't used to be like that. I was saying in the beginning, it's, it's something that we used to use really big presentations, large baits, night crawlers. You, used to drift night. you can still do those things, don't be wrong. You'll still catch some fish on them. But now that there's so many people we had to change, you had to evolve over time. And so noodle rods were invented, lighter lines were used, smaller flies, smaller baits like the single egg. And it started to catch a lot of fish like that. But now, you know, more and more people are coming to the streams. Even those techniques don't work all the time. That's how many people, and these fish are pressured and they're seeing those same baits because people have caught on, they've learned these techniques. So make sure you continue to switch up evolve with the time with the pressured fish give them new things to look at if you do that you'll catch a lot more fish on steelhead so from all of us at fishitis thanks for watching and we'll see you next time